Ciao. We're Cypress Hill, and you're watching Billboard Cover Stories. <laughs> I, I don't find Latino music a, a phenomenon or anything like that, and it has success for a reason. It has been going on for the last 25 years, and I don't know why they would say currently there's a big Latino success of music. Latinos make great music just like everybody else, so to me, it's just whatever. <laughs> I just think the culture is, um, I mean, I think the culture of hip hop is just expanding and it's taking over globally and it's, it's invading all forms of um, culture and all forms of expression, film, television, um, now Broadway plays and everything like that. I just think it's getting bigger and it's invading everything so it's becoming more of awareness. And um, not only is, is the fan base growing up, the youth are growing up with it, you know, and as more people get born and growing up and turn nine or ten they start getting into music um you know everything's just naturally expanding like that uh mayhem lorenz yeah i'm digging mayhem lorenz rock marciano um this kid named ito it's a few different artists out there like on the underground right now i've always, I always looked to the underground for music um look for new stuff um you know explore go on soundcloud find music that i like and um find groups like when we were first coming up, you know, stuff that's fresh, new, that has its own like twist on this whole culture and on, and on sound. And you just find people that come along every now and then that pretty much reinvent the wheel, you know what I mean? Um, hip hop is a thing that's been developing in all these countries for a long time. I've been seeing, you know, since um, the early nineties. The thing that's interesting is a lot of it, when you went to these places, you'd hear it was just a copy of American shit. It was a copy of our beats, and then you'd hear the flow on the music, and it would be a flow you heard on a hit song in America. So you hear that going on a little bit less now, where a lot of different regions are putting their own cadences, their own flows, and putting their own flip on the music and broadening the music and um, you know, um, adding on to the culture and not just sucking it off the culture. So I see a lot of that happening as opposed to before. What makes a singer non-mainstream in 2018, I, I guess, would be the lack of success. <laughs> <laughs> Putting out whack shit. Putting out whack stuff. Putting some whack stuff out. Yeah. That's what's You're not going to go mainstream too quick. Hmm. The relationship between fans and artists, I... I think for the most part still the same. Anywhere the music is played live, I think the exchange between the artist and the fan is still the same. Um, you know, it's the whole, we come to watch a good show, we give it to them, they clap, and we, everybody feels great at the end of the night. And that's still the same. I think the only thing that has changed is how they get their music. You know, before you had to buy an album or an EP or something, you know, sometimes artists had singles, but um, now it's like you could just buy like, the one song you like off the record and that's kind of like where I feel they've changed as well because you're not getting the full effect of that artist's mental you know where he's coming from where he wants you to feel because no artist makes an, an album with just one hit song on it this is the song that's going to sell the record it's all about knowledge of the music and what you're listening to I believe so yeah I, I think the artist feels more accessible to you know certain artists and they could just jump on the comments part and put whatever you know they want to put up there and feel like yeah he you know the artist got this from me or i said this to him or whatever or you know hey i told that dude that you know f off or whatever i think social media is one of those you know evil and good things but you still need them together at the same time you know so when it comes down to social media it just you can just see in what we're doing that's all it is you're not affecting the way i write music and i'm not affecting the way you listen to music i think radio um from from what's setting trends and stuff radio is youtube radio is soundcloud for the youth you know what i mean um that's radio that's where you're finding cutting edge things and, and you're finding good music anything you want plus the cutting edge stuff is on those two things i like if you're trying to listen to terrestrial radio Unless you're listening to like classic music and 
you know, soul stations and funk. And I think if, if you're a music lover, not just a pop music fan, that trying to get what you want out of terrestrial radio, you're going to be disappointed every time. In hip hop, we listened to the mix shows that were on from like 9 to 12 in those times because that's where we always got the new music and the dope shit. So now I just get all that on the internet and YouTube. And there's no way you could actually put just three favorite yeah, records of all time. That's um, a weird question. I would say Cypress Hill 1, Nirvana's Nevermind, and Led Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. I can't even answer that question. <laughs> I'm having a hard time right now. <laughs> I'm, really about to, I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. How about 10? <laughs> <laughs>